Good morning. Welcome to This Week. The fallout. I got the ambassador on the other end, and he said, Greg, we're under attack. New hearings and new revelations on Benghazi. Is it a political cover-up? The White House has done everything possible to block access. Or politics as usual. Republicans have chosen to politicize this. Will it hurt the president or Hillary Clinton? We'll ask our headliners, Senators John McCain and Jack Reed. Plus... I don't make decisions based on perceived. Obama's red line on Syria. This is a hell of a lot more important to me than running for president. Chris Christie's surprise... Jump up on in there. And on this Mother's Day... Okay, you all set? Top moms in Congress in our Sunday Spotlight. We have a women's bathroom right off of the floor. Which first time. First time in 200 years. From ABC News, this week with George Stephanopoulos. Reporting from the Museum in Washington, Martha Raddatz. Hello again. George is off today. Great to have you with us. The political storm over Benghazi is brewing anew this morning. The Obama administration on the defensive after ABC News obtained emails showing extensive edits to the disputed talking points issued after the attack. When one version suggested al-Qaeda affiliates took part and the CIA warned of threats, Secretary Clinton's spokesperson objected, writing that could be abused by members of Congress to beat up the State Department for not paying attention to warnings. So why would we want to feed that? Friday, my colleague, Chief White House Correspondent John Carl, who exclusively obtained the emails, questioned White House spokesperson Good, Jay Friday Carney. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. The CIA again. original version included references to al-Qaeda. Those were taken out after the CIA wrote its initial draft. And then the CIA wrote another draft. Uh, at the, Based on input from the State Department. Well, but here's, here's what I've been saying, Do you John. deny that? No, John. There was an interagency process, which is always the case, because a lot of agencies have stakes. The whole effort here by Republicans to find some uh, hidden mystery uh, comes to nothing because the president called it an act of terror. Joining us now, Republican Senator John McCain. <laughs> nice to have you here, Senator McCain. What do you make of the White House response? Could I just pick up on what you just showed, Mr. Carney, say the president didn't call it an act of terror. In fact, two weeks later, before the U.N., he was talking about hateful videos and spontaneous demonstrations. I, I think the White House I, would I mean, probably say there, there was the remark that it was a terror attack, although it did no, seem rather said, indirect. What he did say the day after was he condemned acts of terrorism. But then that night, within, uh, I think it was 60 minutes, I'm not sure, interview, and then throughout the next two weeks, he kept saying that it was caused by a spontaneous demonstration sparked by a hateful video. He kept saying that over and over again and condemning that. Now, Martha, you've got to look at this in the context of the times there. They're in the midst of a presidential campaign. The narrative by the Obama campaign is that bin Laden is dead, uh, the, uh, Al Qaeda's on the run, not to worry about uh, anything, and here comes <coughs> this attack on Benghazi. And there are so many questions that are unanswered. We need a select committee. But for the present spokesman to say that, well, there was only words or technical changes made in those emails is a flat out untruth. I like Mr. Carney, but that that's just not acceptable for the present spokesman to say that to the American people when we now know any reference to act of terror, any reference to Al Qaeda were removed from those talking points. And it was done at a deputies meeting uh, just before uh, Susan Rice would went on television. Would you call a cover-up? I'd call it a cover-up. I, I would call it a cover-up in the extent that there was willful removal of information which was obvious. It was obvious, Mr. Hicks said in his testimony. His jaw dropped when he saw Susan Rice do that. <coughs> um, I, was on, I was on another uh, Sunday morning show after Susan Rice, my jaw dropped. I said, look, people don't bring rocket-propelled grenades and mortars to spontaneous demonstrations. Let, let, let's talk about what's happened with Republicans this week, though, because of these emails. First of all, Ambassador Thomas Pickering, who I spoke to, who did the original review, said the idea of some sort of cover-up cover is absurd. But Congressman Stephen King, Republican from Iowa, said it was bigger than Watergate. And this is what Oklahoma Senator James Inhofe said. People may be starting to use the I word before too long. Okay, okay. I word meaning impeachment. Yeah. 
of all of the great cover-ups in history, we're talking about the Pentagon Papers, the, the Iran-Contra, Watergate, and all the rest of them, this is going to go down as the most serious, most egregious cover-up in American history. I, I, with do, Do you due agree respect, with that? With all due respect, I, I, uh, I think this is a serious issue. I will even give the president the benefit of the doubt on some of these things. We need a select committee. We need a select Do committee that would... Do you blame Hillary Clinton? I think that the Secretary of State has played a role in this. And Do you think I she think had a role in those emails? I, uh, she had to have been in the loop some way, but we don't know for sure. But I do know that her response before the Foreign Relations Committee, who cares? Remember when she said, well, who cares how this happened in a rather emotional way? A lot of people care, I say, with respect to the Secretary of State. So would and you she, like to see her back on the Hill testifying again? Oh, sure. Again? We, we need a select committee that interviews everybody. I don't know what level of, of scandal, quote, unquote, this rises to, but I know it rises to the level where it requires a full and complete ventilation of uh, these facts. Now, here we are nine months later, and we're still uncovering information which, frankly, contradicts the original line that the administration took. And so um, we need the select committee, and I hope we'll get it, and the American people deserve it. And just, just quickly, I want, to, yeah. I want to go back to the testimony of Gregory Hicks, and he talked about bringing military assets in, bringing planes in. The military says that wasn't possible. Do you agree with the I, fact that it wasn't possible? I cannot find, I find it impossible to comprehend why on September 11th, uh, the day we all know is so important, when there have been numerous warnings about the security of, uh, at that consulate, that we didn't have forces that were capable of doing so. And over a seven and a half hour period with all the assets we have in the region, we couldn't have an F-16 at low altitude fly over uh, those people who were attacking our consulate. Uh, and the, another question is, why weren't there forces capable of going uh, to defend that consulate? I, I want to move on to Syria. It's been more than a week <clears throat> since Israeli jets hit targets in Syria more than two weeks since the U.S. said that there was evidence of the use of chemical weapons. What should be happening now concerning especially these chemical weapons and the red line that the president talked about? Well, uh, the president said he wants a U.N. investigation. The only problem with that is the U.N. can't get into, into Syria. Uh, and we read I, this morning that Assad's forces are making incredible gains. You incredible talked gains? about Which a no-fly zone striking targets. What good does that do? Well, uh, first of all, it negates their air assets. In that kind of terrain and that kind of weather, air is a, is a decisive factor uh, in this kind of conflict. A, do, a decisive and, factor in doing what? What's, what's uh, the well, overall Well, we take out strategy? their air, we establish the no-fly, no boots on the ground, no American boots on the ground. That's still that, a lot of risk, taking out that air. In fact, oh, in fact, the Russians have said they would move in well, if they move new anti-aircraft, very in new, sophisticated. If they move that in, it's going to make it more complicated and certainly maybe gives us a little bit of skepticism about a conference, but uh, we can provide them with a safe zone, we can and provide them a place to organize inside Syria. We can give them the heavy weapons that they need who's, who's to them? combat tanks. Who's they, them? I, I know them. I've met them. They're there. But the, how do you the, keep out good <coughs> rebels and bad because, rebels? You've because, got Al Qaeda rebels thank running you. around. Martha, as well. these are legitimate questions you're asking. But they are there, and you put them inside Syria. They then they have a Benghazi. Then they have a place to organize to to identify the right people. These jihadists aren't. There aren't that many of them. They're just so good because they've been fighting all over the Middle East for all these years and they're not afraid to die. But we could still organize a legitimate uh, and non-jihadist uh, group that are already there. They've got a great general. They've got a fine man who is uh, in charge of the Syrian, Syrian National Council. Look, we can Everybody do this. Everybody I talked to said they just can't possibly vet all these yeah, people. They said, they said they couldn't penetrate uh, without great cost Syrian air defenses. I think Didn't the Israelis just kind of blow a hole a mile not, wide in I'm, that? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure they went into Syria. Are you sure? They went into I'm Syria sure they the took jets? out. I'm sure they took out uh, assets of, of Assad's in Syria, which is exactly what we could do with cruise missiles and with Patriot missiles. So uh, that 
obviously blows a hole a mile wide in our Joint Chiefs of Staff, who prove again, if you don't want to do something, they can find reasons not to do it. But look, we either, you've got two choices. Either let this continue, as you just mentioned. Hezbollah is now all in, and the initiative is now on the side of Bashar Assad. You can do that, or you can go in and you can give them a safe zone and you can give them the, the weapons that they need and the, and the help that they need and stop this unconscionable slaughter. And the president, by saying red line, he gave, here, a green, he gave a green light to all this massacres and it's a shameful chapter in American history. Thanks for joining us this Thanks morning, Senator McCain.